Hello, everyone, and thanks again for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach and your podcast host. Today, we are going to speak with one of our franchise partners, actually kind of tease for all of you amazing followers that do these in order, tease from this past week, uh, but it's a, really a very new franchise in our system, a part of an amazing parent company. Uh, so we've got a, a fantastic array of services with this franchise and just opportunities galore for people around the country. So excited to do that. But first, a quick reminder, as always, of who we are. Fran Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals interested in owning a franchise. We are partnered with well over 600 of the top franchisors in the country, spanning nearly 70 industries. Our goal is to help clients find the absolute best franchise for them to own. And the goal of the Franchising 101 podcast is to help educate people on all aspects of franchise ownership. All right, so that's the boring stuff we have to do. Now let's get to the good stuff. And our guest today is not like, he's not just part of a franchise, he created this sucker. Um, and our franchise we're gonna talk about is called Bumble Roofing. Um, and we are with their founder, Czar, every little thing along the way, Mr. David Baton. David, thanks for coming today. Thanks for having me, Tim, very excited. And I made a colossal error there. I'm like, I should have probably double checked. I'm pretty sure I said your last name correctly. How did I, how did perfect. I do? Perfect, so, perfect. Usually, yeah, everybody else sabotages it, but that was awesome. perfect. Awesome. Well, with somebody with the last name Parmeter that gets Parmeter, Parameter, <laughs> Parameter, all things, uh, I'm I'm usually a little more sensitive to that. So, um, so cool. Well, I uh, we got a bunch of things we want to talk about. Obviously, about Bumble. But as I say all the time, franchising, this is a people business more than anything else. And I know you're going to talk a little bit about your journey, even to getting to where you are now and, and how, how people and that connectivity is important to you. But tell us a little bit about David and, and how, how did we get Bumble and how did we get into the world of franchising? Give us, uh, give us the scoop, man. Yeah, so uh, I'll try to make it as quick as possible and as least boring as possible, but I was kind of born into home services. Uh, after graduating from high school, uh, I went up to school in Santa Barbara for, for a year, uh, realizing that college wasn't for me, decided to move back home in LA. Family friends said, you know, hey, you know, you're not really doing anything right now. Why don't you come join this home service company that I'm part of uh, and, and join as an uh, in-home commission sales guy. I knew nothing about the industry, had no idea what I was talking about, but the money uh, seemed, you know, very, very appetizing. So, uh, hopped into that, got trained for about a month, and within a month, I was out on the field selling roofing, selling solar, uh, eventually a bunch of other products. Uh, over the course of about seven years, um, I hopped from company to company, trade uh, over trade. Uh, I've, I've touched a little bit of, of, of every single trade you can think of in the home service space, and, and I've really learned it from the inside out. And when I say from the inside out, I've done everything from project management. Um, I've done a lot of in-home sales. I've done door knocking. I've done cold calling, a little bit of marketing and branding, and basically learned the, the entire ins and outs of the industry. Uh, the reason I kept hopping around, though, wasn't so much to learn other trades. I, I just never really found a home. And, and, and what I mean by that is, uh, you may or may not know this, most home service companies in general have a very bad rep, right? Contractors, nobody likes working with them. The first three letters of contractors spells out con, right? C-O-N. That's what most consumers know us as. And for me, being that I am very customer focused and very customer centric, it was really hard for me to stay at these companies that were always profits over people, right? It was never about the people, either the people working there or the people that we're working for. And they were always worried about profit. So it was always hopping around. I always had missed sales opportunities because of these companies that I worked for. Companies, you know, that I worked for because they were doing such a bad job with their customers were just changing their names on a yearly basis. Uh, and it just wasn't something like I felt like I could grow with. Uh, fast forward to, to, to 2015, I decided to, I decided to launch my first company. That was an A through Z home remodeler. We did everything you can think of. Uh, I used to tell my, my, my salespeople, if the customer wants to buy a car, We'll find a way to sell them a car. Like we used to cold call for all of our leads. We did some canvassing as well. That was the majority of the, the appointments that we went out to. And it was it was what I learned before, right? However, we were a little bit more customer focused, but it was still a commissioned salesperson model. So 
being that it was a commission salesperson model, it was still profits over people for some of those for, for, for those some of those salespeople that worked for us. And I realized over time that that wasn't going to be very sustainable. It's not very scalable. You know, I, I'm all about, like I mentioned, people first and, and making sure our customers are happy. I'm a big believer that if you make your customers happy, everything else is going to come easy. Um, you know, whether it be sales, whether it be reviews uh, and, and referrals. And I just felt like that wasn't a very scalable model, not to mention that we sold every product under the sun, which made it very, very difficult to train new salespeople and even, you know, veteran salespeople that were working with us for years. We had guys going out for, you know, roofing one day and the next day they're going out trying to sell a pool and they know nothing about what they're talking about. So again, not a scalable and sustainable model. Decided to put that company up for sale. By the way, that company did a great. I, I, I think our last year we did about $8 million in revenue. And in 2018, I decided to put it up for sale. Uh, sold that business. I told myself I am never getting back into home services again. And <laughs> the reason for that uh, was because the in-home commission salesperson really ruined it for me. Um, I, at my peak, had to deal with 14 in-home commission sales guys. As you can imagine, several different types of personalities, sometimes having to beg these guys to go to certain sales appointments because they're prejudging the appointments. Um, several shady salespeople too, right? Like the, it, it was a revolving door all the time. You couldn't really keep the customer happy and you couldn't really uh, sustain what was going on there. So sold that business. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, uh, for about a year, I had some time to think to myself of, of what the next the next move was. And although I didn't want to get into home services, I always kind of fell back to it. I'm like, okay, well, this is what I know. I've been doing this forever. What, like, what am I going to go learn a completely new industry now? So uh, fast forward to 2019, I decided to look for a trade in the home service space that hasn't been really modernized. Uh, when I say modernized, you know, the, the, the whole customer experience was just really stuck in the past. And that's where I landed on roofing. Uh, luckily for me, roofing was a, you know, a big ticket item. So uh, that made it really exciting as well. But I told myself that if I do something in home services, because I want to make such a great customer experience and I want to make sure it's a sustainable and scalable model, I want to get away from in-home commission salespeople. Uh, so what I built was a completely different model. Uh, our salespeople in quotes, I don't know if the uh, the people listening can see, can see me doing the quotes, but uh, our salespeople are, are actually not commission-based. Um, they're, they're more project managers. We call them our roofing pros. So I took something out of, you know, large companies that I saw uh, in organizations like Apple with their Genius Bar uh, or Best Buy with their Geek Squad and really just took that and implemented that into roofing. So these are guys that love what they do. They love serving the customer. They know what they're talking about and they're there to educate. Our goal with the sales process is to get to your home within 20 to 30 minutes. You'll have an estimate. If you don't want to even meet with us, we can do a contactless appointment. So just creating a very easy process, right? So when I first launched Bumble Roofing in 2019, I, I didn't even know franchising exists in the home service space. I thought franchising was your Subways, your McDonald's, your 7-Elevens. I thought, like, I thought it ended there. I, I didn't know outside of restaurants that that franchising existed, right? So for, for about two and a half years, my, my entire goal was to just blanket the entire country, uh, build a chain, started off in LA, eventually blanketed uh, most of Southern California and parts of Northern California as well. Uh, and then two and a half years into it, when uh, I, I lost a lot of hair and, and grew a lot of white hairs in my beard at only 34 years old, I told myself, okay, I need to, I need to figure something else out. Spoke to a few colleagues in the industry, uh, a buddy of mine uh, uh, connected me with a consulting company that actually comes out and, and, and builds your whole franchising model for a fee. And that's when I gained interest in franchising and realized, okay, franchising can be can be a good channel to, to really grow this thing and, and, and fulfill my vision and dream with Bumble Roofing, making it a household name. So while I was looking at that, the broker who helped uh, facilitate the sale of my last business uh, contacted me randomly. Uh, meanwhile, my attorney's looking over this document for the uh, franchise and consulting company. And my broker calls me and he says, hey, what are you up to these days? Uh, is there anything that I can help with? Blah, blah, blah. And I told him, hey, you know, if, if, if you can find, or, or he mentioned, hey, if, you, if I can find you a partner uh, to help facilitate what you're looking for, 
in the franchising world. Is that something that you're interested in? I said, yeah, why not? You know, here, take three months. Uh, if you don't figure it out, then I'll go back to this consulting company. If we find somebody, then great. You know, if it makes sense, why not? So brought over a lot of people over to the table, uh, a few other portfolio companies, a few private buyers, uh, most from the franchising world. Uh, and that's where I met Scott Zide and Corey Schroeder from Power Brands. Uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, earlier before our call, uh, for me, and uh, disclaimer, uh, I am not getting a raise or any extra equity from this. Uh, for me, it was really love at first sight uh, with Scott and Corey. Um, you know, most of the other buyers that I met with and, uh, and, and, and went through, you know, the process with, I felt like I was just another number to them. Uh, not only that, I felt like all of their customers were just another number to them. And although they may fulfill the vision of making Bumble Roofing a household name, I didn't really see it being sustainable. Uh, so, um, as I said, you know, it was love at first sight for me. It was about, God, I want to say about a year or so of, of due diligence and back and forth and research and, and can we do this? How can we make this work? Because you got to remember, I wasn't a multi-location franchisor yet, right? I wasn't even in a franchise. So they're taking this brand from the ground up, kind of like Scott in the past has taken uh, Mosquito Squad uh, and, and building it into a multi-location brand. So uh, eventually, fast forward to May 2022, Sorry, May 2023, uh, we uh, finally um, closed everything. Uh, the partnership went through as of May 2023. Uh, and then fast forward till today, about a month and some change ago, we finally become registered and are able to start presenting our franchise to the rest of the U.S. That's awesome. And, and like basically every single person that we talked to, um, their journey into franchising was not like necessarily intended. It was dumb luck, accidental, right? And, and you talk about like, and, and so many people that, that we talk to, you know, franchise equals food. Well, yes, food things are franchises, but it is just, it's just like a tiny little like part Liberty. of it. Hey everyone, I am proud to spotlight one of our premier franchise partners, Moran Family of Brands. Moran is a family of brands in the automotive aftermarket segment, with offerings including Mr. Transmission, Milex Complete Auto Care, and Turbo Tint. These are great brands on their own, but they offer owners the unique opportunity to co-brand, which is basically giving you two franchises under the same roof. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Maybe you're not really a car person, so you're not sure if you could own this. Well, guess what? Moran Brands, they're not looking for mechanics. They're looking for business owners who understand this is an industry that is never going away and is constantly evolving. Now, now you might be saying, well, geez, what about the hybrids and the EVs? And I'm gonna tell you, Milex and Mr. Transmission have been franchising since I was in college. And believe me, folks, that is a long time ago. They have evolved from catalytic converters to the tech-savvy cars of today and will continue to adapt for decades to come. Now, if all that's not enough, Moran Family Brands is truly a family-based franchise system. From their leadership team to their franchise owners, some of whom are second and even third generation owners, the culture of Family First is embodied in everything they do. If this sounds like it might be a great fit for you, then get in touch with us today to learn more about becoming a Moran Family of Brands franchise owner so that you can create your better tomorrow. Super cool. So now we've got Bumble Roofing, part of a power brands, um, and just really kind of getting, so basically if anybody's wondering, short of them being probably like in LA, but even LA is big, if we're pretty much wherever you are in the country is probably an open area to have a, a bumble roofing. Right. And so, which right. is super exciting. Um, I'm not the smartest dude in the world, but when I think about what services bumble roofing has, I'm going to guess it has something to do with the roof, but talk through a little bit of like, from a, if I'm the customer, what things can I have done and what services would, would you provide for me? Yeah, you, you, you definitely hit the nail on the, on the head, Tim. Uh, it, it is roofing service. So uh, the type of services that we offer are going to be roof replacements, uh, ranging on a wide variety of different materials and products, uh, roof repair services, uh, emergency services. So emergency services are things like, you know, placing a tarp on a roof, uh, going to do a quick patch, 
uh, and roofing maintenance. So roofing maintenance involves, you know, upkeep and maintaining your roof, making sure it doesn't leak in the future, uh, usually more in bigger and commercial properties. Uh, the, the main bread, bread and butter is going to be your roof repairs and your roof, re roof replacements. Gotcha. So the I don't want to talk about the like things you're looking for in an owner because like spoiler alert for everyone, I'm gonna guess your owner isn't up there like you know na nailing the nailing stuff on the roof all day every day, right? But I'm fascinated by the kind of that non-commissioned sales thing because that's it's not uncommon in home service, but it's like almost every roofing is that right it is like and i think solar is solar is the same thing right they're the most like fearless yeah. people on the planet they're just gonna go knock on knock on every every single door right and yeah. but but now you've taken something where you look and you go hey this is how everybody else does it i don't want to do it that way i want to find a different way so can you share maybe a little bit about what what that because i think i think there are a lot of people like me and this is me the consumer Oh hell, it's me the it's me the franchise guy too. But um, that looks at roofing as that commission, just trying to see what they can get get you to buy um, yep. because that's how they're making a commission. So talk yep. to us a little bit about what you have done to completely kind of revolutionize this industry. Yeah, so let, let's talk first about you know you you, you mentioned solar salespeople and how they go and and they knock on these doors and you know they're they're just these killer, you know no chance of you saying no type of salespeople, right? So what, what, when I first came up with the concept, uh, my goal was to be like the Tesla of roofing. And, and obviously that's still the goal, right? By, by hopefully blanketing across the country through franchising. Tesla doesn't go knock on doors, right? They have, you know, a website, they have amazing branding. Uh, they may not be the cheapest in the world. They may not have the best product in the world. Not to say that we, that, that we are any of those, but, you know, People know who they are. They're directed through their website. All their leads come digitally, and it's just an easy process, right? So that's what it is for us. We want to make it an easy process. We don't want to rely on door knocking. We're not in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s anymore where the internet doesn't exist like it does today, right? People aren't waiting around at home for David to knock on their door and tell them, hey, you need your, your roof replaced, Right. If you need anything these days, you're going to Facebook, you're going to Google, you're trying to get recommend recommendations online. So that's how people are, are, are reaching out. A hundred percent of the business that we bring in to our uh, company owned location is all going to be done digital. It's all organic. Uh, we're not doing any pay for play. Although when we first started, we, do, we did get a little bit of, of pay, for, uh, pay for play leads just get, to, to get the ball rolling. Uh, but, you know, we're really trying to get away from that. So the whole concept of bringing these people in that are not going to be salespeople uh, makes makes it just a better experience for the customer. It's a much easier sale that way. Like I come from that world of commission sales. I remember how pushy I used to be. I will never forget this. At the age of 19, one of the first companies I worked for, our sales manager at one of our sales meetings, he, he used to say, you do not leave the house. You, or, or you only leave the house if you have a contract or if you're leaving, you're leaving in handcuffs. And that like stuck with me till today. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is, this is what, this is what they teach people, right? Like you spend as much time as possible. You don't give a price before 90 minutes. Like we've completely changed that. You know, we'll give a price over the phone. Like we want to earn your business. I truly believe that if you don't provide the service that the customer has in their mind, then there's no way you're going to get the business. It's impossible. So if you give the customer what they're looking for, which is an easy process, a quick sales process, you're going to get the business more often than not. You know, we're going out there, we're educating them, we're recommending certain things to them. If we see something that they may not need, help. There's been plenty of times where we've lost business because we were just too honest, you know. But in the past, you know, like like we talked about, that 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 was non-existent, right? Today we're in a different world, different day and age. Uh, and people want an easy process. They don't want to deal with these sleazy sales guys. They don't want to be pushed. They want quick. Everybody wants fast and at their fingertips. And, and that's what we've done over here. At yeah, it, I think we've, we've all just gotten to the point. We want what we want, when we want it, how we want it. And and, and again, and I think largely to be heard, right? And so exactly. what, what you're really talking about is like, okay, like I, 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 hear, I hear you consumer, right? We don't like all of these things make it as convenient as possible. And, and I think also 
It's the, the uh, like, I always think that the, the thing in sales trainings where they talk about overcoming objections, right? And like, we'll do this. And overcoming objections is the same thing as arguing, right? And like, yep. <laughs> how about like, I'm just like, and if you can have the, especially when you're going to have that great service that you're going to be able to provide, I'm not arguing with it. They're like, I we can help you. Here's how, right? And just give that simple, calm thing yeah. is, is, is amazing. So, um, I yeah, our, so, our entire sales process, like, like I mentioned, you know, it could be as, as as quick as 30 minutes. And it's literally at the end when we, when we give them a price, we say, hey, what do you think? Do you have any questions? And that's it. Like, we don't object with them. Most of our sales are, you know, two call closes. We're not closing the, the first time we show up at the house. We, we send them the estimate digitally after we leave. And then we have a whole, you know, automated sales process via emails and text messages and just, you know, great branding that really helps make the sale. Yeah. I always, always, always thought in, in in past past roles where I've had to do sales training, I'm like, if you just like if you, you you figure out what they want, you present it, and like, hey, in, any questions? Eventually, the question that you're going to ask is, how do I get started? I'm like, exactly, exactly. Oh. Like, you know, you're not going to argue with that one, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so as an as an owner, um, talk about kind of what their day in a life is, or could they be in that home doing that, like? We, we know we're not on the on the roof, but what are maybe some skills or, or traits that you really look for for an owner? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start off with saying what 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 I do on, on a lot of these uh, these brand president calls with with potential owners is is I like to always talk about the support system with Empower Brands, right? When I when I first or, or the support system, they're getting a lot of franchising concepts, right? I, I, instead of just starting your own own business from the ground up, like when I first started this. I was strapped everything. I didn't know marketing that that well. I had no idea what I was doing with, with basically anything. I didn't even know if the concept was going to work. Like I, I remember my dad telling me, who's, who's a businessman as well. He's like, that's not going to work. What, you're going to sell roofing online? Like, who, like what? You're out of your mind. Like, what are you doing, right? And I took a big a, a big leap and a big risk by doing that. So so the greatest thing about, about joining a franchising concept like Bumble uh, or, or any concept with a great organization that sticks behind it is a support system you're getting. You're getting marketing, you're getting accounting, you're getting IT, you're getting years of blood, sweat, and tears that I put into this business. And you're just coming in and, and you know, your, your, your job is to is to make sure you follow the systems and processes and you go out there and sell and, and, and serve your community. So what we're really, really looking for and what I'm looking for an owner is, you know, somebody that's going to put in the work. Um, yes, we do offer an executive model as well. So, you know, if somebody goes that route, bringing in a good GM or a good operator that can run that business, that's going to put in the work. We, we've done the same thing in our LA location. I haven't ran the LA location, uh, you know, since, since a little bit before we were acquired. Uh, and, and we brought on a, uh, an, an amazing operator over here who's, you know, growing the business, running the business. And, and his ultimate goal uh, is, is aligned with the same goals and vision that I first had when, when, when I launched this business. So that's really what we're looking for. Um, this guy came in here with zero roofing experience and, you know, now he can talk about it for days with customers. So it's not something, you know, that's, uh, that there, there's definitely a learning curve, uh, just like with anything else that's new. Uh, but it's, it's not something that can't be learned fairly quickly. And, and, and obviously over time, you know, you, you'll, you get better and better. So daily, you know, day, day in the life of, of, of an owner operator, uh, they can be that roofing pro. Um, you know, if somebody wants to be an owner operator, we usually push them to be that roofing pro. Why? That roofing pro is a person on the field. They're the ones that are visiting the job sites, speaking to the subcontractors, doing the sales appointments, running all that stuff on the field, being the customer face. Um, I can tell you one thing that in the first year and a half, when I bootstrapped this entire business, I was a sales guy. You know, I was going out on these appointments. I was speaking to the customers and our sales closing our, our sales closing ratio was much higher than, than it is today for, for obvious reasons. People like to speak to an owner, you know, people feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, not to say that you can't do great things with, with an executive model, uh, but, you know, that's that's what I usually tell, uh, you know, potential franchisees, that if you can get out there or if you can get somebody else that's that's going to run it the way that that, that we're expecting, then, then that's what the day-to-day is going to be. Um, usually starting off, it's, it's going to be one person on the field, uh, and an office administrator. Gotcha. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership and 
Guys, let's be honest. You're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this. And I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcast webinars and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. And then you mentioned the labor is being, we're, we are subcontracting that out, correct? Yep, 100% subcontractor model. Uh, um, so, you know, basically we'll sign a contract. Uh, our back office will handle everything from scheduling with the customer, ordering the material, scheduling the subcontractor. Subcontractor goes out with their own tools, their own trucks. Uh, obviously, we'll give them branded materials. So, you know, if they need car magnets uh, to cover up, you know, their logos, if they need, uh, you know, shirts, uh, we provide all that stuff for them. Um, I like to compare it to, you know, companies like, uh, Uber and Waze and things like that, whereas they provide the business and you're just going with, you know, Uber's t-shirt and, and doing the work. Right. And and for anyone listening out there that heard subcontractor and started to hyperventilate. So um, I don't know how to do that. Um, let me help you with a couple of things. Number one, you're not the first person looking at a model that has subcontractors that has had a little hyperventilation moment. Um, franchise and not only for Bumble in this case, but with Empower, um, there's other brands within Empower that use that as well to be able to help you find them. And then to me, I like the, 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 the sub piece is, you know, well, people always go to the negative. Well, gosh, what if they suck? Um, don't use them anymore. If it's an employee, it's not always easy to get rid of said employee who sucks. But the, but the flip is if that subcontractor is good and you mentioned it, David, like they just want to do the work, right? If they're, yep. if they're good and remotely smart, they're going to see you as their meal ticket. Wait a minute. You're getting all of the work. I don't know how to get the work. I know how to do it. You find it, give it to me. It is like, they'll be, they'll be buying you lunch and flowers and the whole, the whole, the whole deal, because they're going to see you as that, as that meal ticket to be able to allow them to do what they do best, which is the work and you do what's best finding the work. So I just, I tell you, every time we talk to somebody and a subcontractor model comes up, you can just hear the <laughs> go with that a little bit, but it's, it's not for everybody, but it is like, again, it really can help you ensure it could, if, if you're like David, like you said, if, if you're out and you're really checking on the jobs and making sure everything is done at a high quality, um, it's, it's hard to find better, like a better workforce than that. So, yeah, um, it's, you know, pe people have for some reason a really bad rep with subcontractors that what, what I like to compare it to is with every industry, you're always subcontracting something, right? Whether it be your marketing, you know, whether it be your print materials, you're going to third parties to, to fulfill what you need to run your business. You don't have the capital all the time to have these people in house. You don't want the liability of having, like you mentioned, having all these people in the house and, you know, potentially having to get, get rid of a bad person in the construction world. Yeah, it's to fulfill the actual work. But we, you know, if you, if you really want to look at the big picture, we also subcontract materials, right? We have our suppliers, which are third parties. If right. they're bad, we stop using them. If they're good, we continue to use them. So it's it's, it's like that in, in the world of business in general. And, and I think I think there's just a very bad rep because people don't understand what subcontractors really are. Right, right. Well, and you you said it really well, and I'm going to steal this in the future and totally take credit for it. But what's the first three letters in in contractor, right? Um, yep. And the and the and the flip. I think if you think about this as a consumer, when you find somebody that you're doing business with that is good, you will use them. You will refer them, right? Whether it's the person that's coming to clean your house. Or man, I love the tacos over here at, you know, Tim's Tacos and I go there every Tuesday, right? 
like same same thing with this when you find the good people they like you will continue to build those those long term relationships um the um and you mentioned like the 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 really the organic side of the lead gen and not just knock 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 and again empower brands is fantastic from that marketing standpoint as well how much if any do you look for an owner to get out and connect in the community um realtors property managers other home service brands is is that how important is that for you guys i think um it, i think it's very important i think it's very big brand recognition is huge you know people in your community knowing the the person behind you know that brand and behind that business my first year and even today really like we we network all the time Chamber of Commerce is, which I'm not a big fan of, uh, but, you know, it still doesn't hurt. You might get, you know, you might get a sale here and there, um, you know, different different networking groups going down to real estate offices, insurance brokers, property management companies. Uh, the, the Really, it, it doesn't end. Everybody needs a roofer. There's not one building, whether it be residential or commercial, that doesn't have a roof, right? So, um, especially in areas where, where there's a lot of rain, a lot of storms, you know, you're, you're going to need that. So, uh, that networking is a big deal. Um, you know, if you're, if you're competing in areas where you have your storm chasers that are door knocking, you're going to want to be at top of mind before that storm comes in. You're going to want to know that, you know, Sally and Bob down the street already know who you are before, you know, ABC roofing knocks on their door. So, uh, yeah, very, very important aspect uh, in, in my opinion of any, of any business, not, not just yeah. the roofing. Yeah, no, and, and I think I think any business, but I think anything in home service, right? Like realtors are the best referrers on the planet. They got somebody for everything, right? Um, or you know, the the you know, a roofer, roofing business being able to refer to, you know, different home services. There's like like I, I got I got a guy, I got a person for for that, right? If you if you trust me to come clean your house. Um, if you're going to then trust me, if I give you a referral for, Hey, we need a new roof. Oh yeah. You got to call the guys over at Bumble. They're, they're freaking awesome. Right. Um, so again, just, it's not like you said, it's not that pushy sales. It's just connect, build some relationships, right? Don't. And I always think from that networking standpoint, don't go into those things with your handout. Give me, give me referrals. Give me referrals. How can you help somebody else? Right. Like, exactly. uh, from from that perspective. And, and for Empower, I think you have the added benefit of 10 other brands. Right. So there's a good chance you start Bumble Roofing. There's going to be one of those other Empower brands in your area that is immediately your new best friend. That owner being able to connect, get to get to know them. Um, some of the cross marketing things. Really huge. So um, love it. So, David, the I want to really enjoy talking to you and having you come on to chat with us about Bumble. And I want to be respectful of your time. So I'm going to fire one more really difficult question. This one clearly is the one that makes everybody tear up because it's so like tugs at the heartstrings, but what if there was one other thing about Bumble and I know there's a million, but if there was one other thing we haven't talked about that you would want people to know, what might that be? Yeah, so I think I think the biggest thing and, and, and one of the biggest questions I get all the time is is why Bumble, right? Like how did you come up with the name? What like what's Bumble roofing? What do you guys stand behind? Um, so you know, besides for the experience and and you know, all of the uh, the the different, you know, key service takeaways and, and, and the value that we bring to the table when replacing your roof. Uh, and the, the amazing tools that were built, that we built, and that we're continuously building to, to ensure that you know our customer has an amazing experience. Um, I think it's really important in today's day and age too to to, to give back to something. Uh, so Bumble Roofing was 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 really founded on you know on on giving back to our bee society, as you may have guessed. Uh, bees are our number one pollinator, uh, and they help about forty percent. Of the food that we eat today, um, they, they, they help pollinate that food, right? So with, without bees, the world would not exist as we know it, that's for sure. And they are on their way to extinction. Uh, so we've started something uh, out in the LA location. It's not going to be mandatory for every franchisee, uh, but we are partnered up with the Xerxes Society, which is a nonprofit that helps save our bees. 
Um, on behalf of every, every single roof that we replace, we give back on behalf of that customer uh, with a small little donation. Customers then are going to receive an awesome little gift box with with a bunch of our merch and and some some uh, single serve honeycomb. Um, so you know our, our connection you know in our name to bees re- really really runs very deep, uh, and, and it's very important for me to continue with that philanthropy and and really bring that to the world because people don't understand how important bees are. We took our team over here in LA to a beekeeping experience about three months ago, and what I learned was absolutely amazing and how, how closely related they are. When I say closely related, I don't mean actually related, but, but how, how they, they really work together like humans is, is just mind boggling. It's just such, such a smart living being that, that, that does so much for, for, for us and our planet. And, you know, we, we really do a lot to, to, to give back to that community. Uh, that is fan- fantastic. And you you kind of blew me away with that. I didn't know really any of that. So um, I, and I, I want to swat them away, but because I don't want to, I don't want to stung because I'm a big baby, but I need to suck it up. For, and, uh, and I think they won't sting you. Bees only sting. So honeybees only sting if they feel threatened. They will never sting you. Wasp, on the other hand, smack them away, step on them, kill them. They're, 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 they're there to sting you, right? They're, they're, they're on a suicide mission, but, but, but our honeybees are, you know, they're, they're there to pollinate. They're there to create honey. They're there to, to feed their queen bee. Uh, and, um, you know, they're, they're really here to, to feed us. So do not awesome. kill our honeybees. Awesome. Um, well, very cool. So Thank you so much um, for for everything with this, David. And and again, congratulations to you on again creating something so amazing. And and at the really at the start of that franchise journey. And I know we are going to see Bumble roofing all over the country here in a, in, a, in a few years. So thank you so much uh, for coming on, and congratulations to you, Tim. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, one quick little thing as we wrap up, everybody. As always, thanks for tuning in. FranCoach.net, Franchising101podcast.net. Um, want to learn more about Bumble or any of the 600 plus franchises? Reach out to us today. Um, quick reminder, Wednesday, November 8th, 3 Eastern. Uh, thanks to our wonderful partners over at entrepreneur.com. Um, apparently they couldn't get any other guests, so they have me on to talk about the side hustle in franchising. We often talk to about, about semi-absentee ownership. Wednesday the 8th, 3 Eastern. Tune in, ask a question. Don't be afraid to shout out like Franchising 101 podcast in the middle of it. It'll be awesome. Uh, but in the meantime, tune in next week. We've got another amazing guest coming on to uh, to chat with about their experience. Um, and as always, reach out anytime so we can help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in and we will talk with you all soon.